In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to keep credit cards from destroying your finances. In this video, there's going to be a lot of hard topics that are discussed. And I just need you to be open-minded and self-aware enough about your finances to see if one of these things are affecting you and how to take a step back from credit cards if you need to. The first point I have is that if you can't pay for it in cash, you shouldn't purchase it. This is pretty much a basic principle when it comes to credit cards and how you can keep yourself from going further into debt. The second point I have is that if you can't use an active budget like the Every Dollar app, you shouldn't have a credit card. I want to dive into this a little bit more in detail. MIT did a study that showed that people tend to spend 10% to even 100% more when they're using a credit card on a purchase. If you don't have a budget that you're actively managing and keeping track of to make sure that you don't go over for your budget that month, you will quickly spiral out of control and go into a ton of credit card debt. I suggest that if you want to keep your credit card, you need to actively maintain your budget, like using an every dollar app. This can help with that credit card statistic that says people tend to spend 10% to 100% more, as long as you can stay within your budget category. Another way to help manage your credit card is to make sure it's paid off weekly or bi-weekly. And this is because spending with cash creates a psychological effect to make you not want to spend more because you can't spend more than what you have. So in a similar way, you want to make sure that you're paying off your credit card weekly or bi-weekly so that you can see the money coming out of your bank and that you don't overspend. So what is the purpose of using credit cards? Well, one may argue that it's to build up a credit score. So if this is the case, then you really only need one active credit card. And so that's my next tip to you is to only use one credit card. Don't worry about bouncing off bonus points or whatnot, because if you think about it, if you end up spending 10% to even 100% more per transaction, are you really getting back your 2% or even upwards to 5% bonus points back in value? No, you're not. You're actually losing 5%. So if you think about it that way, don't worry about bonus points and trying to work around each card to maximize your points. Instead, use one active card so that you can keep track of your finances a little bit better. It'll just simplify the whole process. The next thing you need to do with your credit card is make sure you set it to the correct limit. I suggest that you set it to one half of your take home pay for the month. This is because you typically are spending one half of your take home pay on other necessities like rents, utilities, car payments, and other things like that. You should never be spending more than one half of your take home pay on a credit card. So what some people may talk about then, shouldn't I not be spending more than 30% of my total available limits on my credit cards? And that is absolutely true. You shouldn't be spending more than that. But if you make sure that you're paying it off weekly or even bi-weekly, you shouldn't run into that problem. And if you need to because of a big purchase, to pay it off even after right after the purchase after a couple days then go ahead and do that to make sure that you don't go over that 30 percent but remember this is to protect yourself the next topic i'm going to discuss is going to be a little bit hard to hear so this is my question in the last 12 months have you not been able to make your credit card payment and that means paying your credit card off in full that month if the answer is yes you haven't been able to do that then you shouldn't have a credit card Remember that finances is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. So you have some difficult behavior that you need to curve. So if you have happened to make only a minimum payment and not been able to pay off your credit card in full, I highly, highly encourage you to just get rid of your credit cards. Don't worry about building up a credit score or even getting bonus rewards. Focus on what's really important in that behavior. Something happened. It may be a been a medical emergency or something like that. But don't even worry about that. Something happened that caused you to go over in your, in your spending. So if that happened, something's got to change. So we got to just get rid of the credit cards completely. You may have a lot, of, a lot of difficulty hearing that, but in the end, this is what you're going to need to do. Now let's talk about how many credit cards should you have. As I mentioned before, you should only be actively using one credit card. But I highly encourage you just to keep your other credit cards that have no annual fee. And this is because your credit score is affected by how long your credit cards have been open for. 
So if they don't have any annual fee, I suggest you put a rubber band out of the stack of all of them and throw them into your safe and don't touch them. Make sure that you go into the, your account for each one of them online to set notifications that a transaction has be, been made over $1. And this can help protect you to know when someone may have gotten access to that card number for some particular reason, because you're probably not actively checking those accounts and those balances to see if a transaction has been made. Finally, when is the right time to get rid of all those extra cards and only use only one active card? And I suggest that's when you purchase your first home. So this is because you need a good credit score to get a good interest rate on a massive loan. This could be anywhere from 100,000 to upwards to a million dollars depending on where you're at. So it's really important to make sure you have a good interest rate. All this build up to get that good credit score and keep all those extra cards is paid off. But as soon as you make that purchase, get rid of them now. You don't really need to be actively creating a good credit score because you shouldn't be financing things like a car because they're depreciating assets. So you really need to pay for those in cash. Now your question may be, but don't I still need a credit score? What if I move houses? And you do still need a credit score. I'm not suggesting you get rid of it completely and trash your credit score. What I'm suggesting is that you get rid of those credit cards because they're not going to have a significant impact a couple years down the road when you decide that you need to change homes or you're moving or whatnot because your mortgage is now going to build up your credit score even better. You know yourself better than anyone. So continue to be self-aware of your finances so that you can manage your credit cards more effectively. If you like this video, please make sure you like the video below and subscribe for more videos just like this one. <laughs>